Welcome, ladies and gentlemen! Today, we will transform our boring, dark void game engine into something more appealing. The appeal will come from two features, so it's a double feature video this time. One of them is a skybox and the other one is the directional light. Without further ado, let's get into it! Let's start with Skybox. Funnily enough, I myself had no idea why it's called the Skybox in the first place. Everyone knows how a Skybox looks. In most cases, it's just the sky of the game. But if it's the sky, why is it called a Skybox? Well, the box comes from a technical side, of course. A Skybox is a seemingly infinite sky that looks the same no matter where you move in the game world. So how is that achieved? The first idea that comes to mind is that we have a giant cube that stretches to the edges of the world and has a sky texture map to it. A decent guess, but that's not how it works. Skybox functions with the help of some rendering magic. In real life we see objects based on where they are. If there is an animal in front of you, you see it. If the animal is behind the house, you see the house, but not the animal. But in computer graphics it's different. We are able to choose what we want to see. For example, if we have an animal behind the house, we can choose to draw it on top of the house. In other words, the same rules don't apply and all of this is leading back to the skybox. A skybox is not a massive box that surrounds the scene. No, no, no. It is a small box that surrounds the camera. We just choose to ignore the fact that the walls of the box are closer to the camera than the other geometry the camera is rendering. A skybox is just one seemingly infinite lie. Rendering engines use a depth buffer to check the depth of each pixel in relation to the camera, producing a correct representation of depth. This buffer stores depth values for each pixel to determine if it is visible. If depth testing is disabled, the depth buffer is not used, and objects are rendered in the order they were processed, meaning that geometries that were rendered last will appear on top. All of this means that we draw the skybox first, and then draw everything else on top of it creating the illusion that the skybox is actually far away. Now, the implementation on paper is very simple. We put the camera inside the box and map a texture on the walls. When the camera moves, the box moves as well, therefore creating the effect of our skybox. So let's get into it. We will first need to create a texture that can be mapped onto the inside of the cube. In graphic-specific terms, this texture is called a texture cube. We can load it using libraries like Free Image Library and DirectX. A texture cube is an array of textures, one texture for each wall to be precise. We grab an image that has these six parts, or it could be loaded from six separate images. There is no difference. Some manual image splitting will be required if using one image, however. The main point is that we create this array of six textures and bind it to the rendering pipeline so the shader can see it. As for the shader of the skybox, it is relatively primitive. For each vertex, we take its world space position and normalize it to create a direction vector. This direction vector is used to sample the skybox texture. The graphics API automatically interpolates the direction vectors for all the pixels between vertices, ensuring the skybox texture is correctly mapped. And now, we have a result that looks like this. Uh, and now it looks like this. Shit. Okay. And now, we have a skybox that looks like this. Boom. We're done! We can change the image to whatever we want, and it looks absolutely awesome. It's crazy how a simple feature like this creates such an awesome effect. This is already much better, but now we are going to make it even more awesome. The skybox gives the engine a more natural feel, but the geometry itself is still relatively dark, so after I implemented the skybox, I decided to also improve the lighting. Currently, the single light our engine supports is called a spotlight. It is essentially a point in space for lighting calculations. A spotlight is great for small spaces like rooms, however, for outside environments we want something brighter. So, we are going to implement a directional light. Directional light simulates the sun. Since the sun is so far away, in our entire world, we are saying that the light is coming from the same direction. This time, I did everything properly. I created a lighting system for the new Archtype PCS, and boy it was simple to create and query with the system. Now I know it was worth it to spend two months rewriting it. Anyway, since the light itself is just a bunch of numbers for direction and brightness, all the system needs to do is query entities that have some sort of lighting components and then bind the data to the constant buffers in the rendering pipeline. For now, we just have one directional light, so it is very simple. 
With some help from ChatGPT, I changed my shaders to use directional light calculations and wow, the result is completely different. The lighting is very bright and the shading very smooth. It can really be felt with a sphere, for example. Combined with a skybox like the space environment, the engine is starting to feel a bit more modern. We are not able to change the direction the light is facing during runtime, so I think next time we will work on some UI for our entity component system to be able to render each component's parameters individually and change them. But this time, that's all I have for you. I wanted to do a shorter video this time because in the background I am fixing a lot of stuff that is wrong with the engine architecturally and I do not want to take it 3 months to produce a single video. I also found a new job and I am doing more stuff outside since it's finally summertime. So I will take it easy for the time being. Because this project is just for me to have fun. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this interesting and maybe even learned something new. If you want to support me, consider dropping a like or subscribing. I'll catch you soon. Later.